everyone and welcome to the fifth and final part of my walk along the Scarborough to Whitby Railway. But you only thought there was going to be four parts, didn't you? But no, there's one last bit that we need to do to finish off. So this is where we got to last time. We came from Robin Hood's Bay, end of the line, Westcliff Station. It's a little way up there. I'm going to talk about Westcliff Station in a future video. But it needs mentioning now because back when the line to Loftus Middlesbrough via Sands End and Kettleness closed in 1959, all workings from Scarborough had to come up to Westcliff Station down there and then turn back on themselves and go to Prospect Hill Junction and under Laurelpool Viaduct. Now, the last few years of service on this line, that was made a lot simpler due to the fact that those trains were then diesel multiple units, cabs at both ends for those that are on shore. So they used to come in over Laurelpool Viaduct stop at the station and then drive straight back out again down the descent of Prospect Hill under the viaducts and into Whitby Town Station. So what seems such a long time ago now we began our journey back down here in Scarborough and we headed north towards places such as Raven's Car, Robin Hood's Bay and on towards Whitby where we are right now. In the last episode we left off just north of Larpool Viaduct but how did the trains get from up the top of this line and down into Whitby Town Station. So here is Larpool Viaduct just down here and here is Whitby Town Station just over here. And we're beginning where we left off last time at Prospect Hill Junction. Now just further up the line in this direction was Whitby Westcliff Station. Now up until the 1950s the services from Scarborough went up to Westcliff Station and then reversed or the locomotive ran around and headed around that great big curve at the bottom. It went down a huge descent down towards Whitby Town and of course services leaving Whitby Town went around this curve and climbed this huge ascent up towards where the junction is at the top. So I'm going to pick up where we left off last time and try and trace this former track bed down into Whitby Town. They've just gone below Prospect Hill, the road that gives the name to Prospect Hill Junction and we're coming up to this very junction now, you see that retaining wall on the left. So if you remember, if you watched part four, we came up from the viaduct in this direction and went up there under the bridge and we would have got as far as Westcliff Station before the train would have basically ran round or went in the opposite direction but headed off down here. And this is the route that we're going to follow today. And we're going to curve around, head under the viaduct into the S Valley and eventually end up at Whitby Station. So come and join me as I take a journey and finish off our route from Scarborough right through to Whitby. So if you had been on a train coming down here, you would have seen something quite unique. Notice the brick retaining wall just there and there was in fact a signal box just here, but it straddled the train track as if it was coming down so the workings went underneath it in both directions and I think I've got an old photo somewhere so I can show you exactly what it looked like ah then what we got here here we go no sooner as I said I can't find any evidence of where it was and look here there's a recess in the wall so my guess is is that the signal box was here look bit of a giveaway isn't it and that would have been there for people that was on the track, workmen, if a working came with this structure over the top and you would have stood in there just like in a railway tunnel. Yeah. 
So you can see already the descent that we've done since leaving where the signal box was just there because that brick wall is getting higher and higher. It's quite a high bridge down here. We looked at it in the previous video. There's another recess just there, an even taller one. Excuse the sun's glare, it's a lovely sunny day. That's a very nice bridge. When I was up there before, when we did the walk up the top, so you can see the other track bed just there. That's going off towards Scarborough. The side walls are all missing. You can see how low they are. Look how thin that brick is. They've all been removed. So if you could walk across that, there's nothing to stop you toppling off. It's such a high span, isn't it? You've got the shorter first span and this middle span just here, which carried the line down towards Whitby and the S Valley. And then the third span just there. It's a nice little thing that is, isn't it? And just down from there, there's a very tired looking retaining wall. A lot of it's missing, look. Some stone on the floor. Still got the uh, abutment at the end, look. The stone cap pillar, the red brick. That's a tiny reminder, isn't it? That's gorgeous. This astonishing view taken by Doug Hardy just shows the two extreme levels that both lines came from and went to. Look how high up it is climbing up towards Larpool Viaduct and towards Scarborough on the right hand side coming away from Prospect Hill Junction and then we've got the line down to Whitby on the left heading down to the bottom on quite a descent. It's extraordinary the two differences. So into a more woodland setting now we've left that bridge behind you can see the drainage channel still exists on the left and it's still doing its job. Listen to the birds if you've picked them a few times already. A lot of wildlife down here. So this is the mighty Larpool Viaduct, 279 metres from one side to the other and 37 metres high and it's got 13 brick built arches. You can just see it through there. I've got some really, really nice drone footage to show you and it also featured extensively in part four of this series of videos. But it, you can't get bored of this. Look at all the undergrowth around it. Now I come down here in uh, February and there was nothing you could run all the way down from the top and now it's just impossible but i'm following the track bed aren't i so you can see this is the second span that the track bed previously ran underneath up to prospect hill and further down towards the station at whitby but it's very very sketchy right now We're very much on the edge look i don't even think the track bed would have come this close it would have been around about there because the the pillar of 
the viaduct is there so the trout bed is probably about 10 or 12 feet over in that direction just there but we're lucky enough to have this footpath it's a bit of a track going down there's the actual active railway line down there might go and have a nosy So pushing on a little bit further, there used to be a gas works, Whitby gas works was just down there. You can't see it, you can't even see the viaduct anymore. You might just see some red brick in the centre. Very overgrown, but it's still walkable. And just jumping off, you can actually see potentially where the track bed was. God, look at this. So it's like a cutting lot. Very, very shallow. Turn around, it does exactly the same. So it's nice to see that it looks like we've picked up a part of the old track bed there. Let's push on further down. So the path's now come around, look, and we've met up with what I believe, well, it was the track bed. You can see the way it's been cut out just there, look. So we stood firmly on that and we're gonna walk and follow that now, aren't we? So although it looks exactly the same as the path that we were just following on the edge of the hillside there, it's nice knowing that we're actually, well, I think it's there because this tree once been there, would it? But we're closer to it than we actually were before. literally just had to make my way through that sodding lot. I've got the shorts on. I thought about turning back and coming back the opposite way. There's a lot of prickly things down here. Mm, I can see the A171 up there. I'm going to attempt to carry on. Jumping back to the 1950s, you can see the gas works on the right hand side. Larpool Viaduct dominating the scene with a working going over the top and the S Valley line curving away beyond the viaduct. The little route we followed all the way from Prospect Hill Junction is just visible in the second arch on the right hand side but jumping even further back look at this where's the viaduct? This is before the viaduct had been constructed I believe there was early signs of development around about this time it is just beautiful and hard to believe that the gas works was even there before the viaduct. So the A171 bridge between Scarborough and of course Whitby, that was built between 1976 and 1980 to relieve congestion going over most likely that swing bridge down there. This was also the point where both tracks came down to meet. So you've got this former track bed that we've been following and attempting to follow coming down here. But before where the bridge is, that's where both tracks met each other and went on towards the station. this is the closest point you can get to the track lot now the path I'm attempting to follow does continue on through there it's a fence post you can walk around but that's extraordinary how close you can get just here but I've not forced my way through any fences or anything and the footpath does lead you down here it just becomes very difficult at times that actually appears to be as far as we are going to get it does you know we're not going down there so what i'm going to do is backtrack and make my way back up to the viaduct 
come around and pick up the footpath on the other side of the track and then continue up. So right back below the A171, there it is, look, we got just there, just the other side of those two signs before the track bed ran out on us and it would have involved us coming across the track illegally and on to the footpath, what I'm on now. There it is, look, uh, I did a bit of footage of me walking back just so you know that I didn't actually do that and I did actually walk all the way around back into the town. And this was Boghole Junction just there. You've got a very rusty track and buffers there. Whether they use these for empty coaching stock, I don't know. We'll see further up. This used to be a wharf over there where the car parks are now. But we're leaving the bridge behind now, look. Here we are, Whitby Railway Station. The station in Whitby sits 1835, three tracks wide. One side, I believe this side is used for the heritage trains that come from the North Yorkshire Moors Railway and the central track being a run round for the locomotive when it brings it in. I think the network rail stuff may come in on the other platform or maybe they use both of them. I'm not entirely sure because I've never seen a train actually come in here before. So as our journey along the former Scarborough to Whitby Railway reached its conclusion, 
I take a look back at some of the most beautiful sights that we have seen running through the Yorkshire countryside and coast. We've seen some absolutely beautiful sights and beautiful places along this route as we've headed north towards Whitby, skirting the coastline and visiting such beautiful places along the way. I want to thank you all so much for watching and following me through this series and I'll be back in North Yorkshire very soon to cover the Whitby to Loftus line.